Module 4, The Leadership of Susan B. Anthony. Chapter 12, The Hope Chest by Karen Schwabach. Homework, read Chapter 12, complete the summary notes and the summary in your reader's guide. Background information for Chapter 12, Ratifying the U.S. Constitution. In this chapter, Ms. Lewis explains to Violet part of the process of ratifying an amendment to the U.S. Constitution. At first, the Tennessee legislature tried to vote on this amendment through a joint resolution, meaning that both houses of the legislature, the House and the Senate, could debate and vote on the amendment at the same time. Since the joint resolution failed, the House and Senate needed to debate and vote separately on the amendment, and a majority of both houses needed to vote yes for the amendment to pass. Chapter 12, Violet Spies. Page 146, Chapter 12, Violet Spies. Violet spent a hot, miserable night sharing a bed with Chloe and thinking it would have been cooler in the hermitage where you didn't have to pay for the fan. But in the morning, Violet had an idea. She woke up stiffly next to Chloe, who was still asleep. A young woman was walking around the room, eating a bowl of grape nuts. Violet figured this woman must be Miss Lewis, who Chloe had told her was the lady who had the other bed. Violet dressed hurriedly and wanted to run out to the train station to start looking for a myrtle. But Miss Lewis insisted she should eat some grape nuts first. They were supposed to be very good for you. There wasn't a spoon or any milk, so Violet scooped them up from the bowl with her fingers and chewed while Miss Lewis talked. Page 147. Today is the fourth day the legislature has met, Miss Lewis said. We were hoping it would be all over by now. The first day they tried to pass a joint resolution in the Tennessee House and Senate and we thought we had enough votes, but the antis had bribed a lot of the men we were counting on. She wiped a hand over her forehead, which was already sweating. How long will they meet for? Violet asked. We don't know, said Miss Lewis. The Senate and House have to vote separately now, and they each have to pass the amendment, and we don't know when they will. The antis are trying to bribe as many legislators as they can, and they won't let the vote happen now until they're sure they can win. Aren't the Suffs bribing legislators? asked Violet. She was too tired to think straight, or she would have realized how rude this sounded. Certainly not, said Miss Lewis. Women are entering politics to clean it up, not to add to the filth. When women vote, there will be no more bribery or corruption. There will be no more war. The concerns of mothers will become the concerns of the government. Good schools, safe food and temperance. Just think, the United States has banned alcohol completely, and soon temperance will spread to other nations, so that nowhere on earth will my mankind ever be a slave to alcohol again. Violet had finished her grape nuts. Excuse me, Miss Lewis, she said. I need to go to the train station. Turn the page. Page 148. I'm sure those antis are going to use every dirty trick they can think of to block the legislature, said Mrs. Lewis, seeming not to hear her. If only there were some way we could know what they were planning. As she walked along, Violet reflected that she had sat in an anti-meeting last night, eating sandwiches, and that nobody had even noticed she was there. She was perfectly set up, Violet thought, to be a spy. She could go back to the hermitage, pretend to be an anti, and tell the Suffs what the antis were planning. She wanted to do something to help, since meeting that hatchet-faced woman in Chattanooga yesterday, she found she cared about women's suffrage very much. It was more than just a newspaper story to her now. Violet looked at the rail yards that she was walking past. She saw two hobos walking along, carrying small bundles under their arms. They looked like they had just gotten off train, and they reminded Violet of Hobie the Hobo. She wondered if he'd gotten to Florida yet. The smaller hobo let out a cry and grabbed the bigger hobo's arm, pointing to Violet. Violet started. Hobos could be dangerous. She'd gathered that much from Hobie, who had been careful not to let her and Myrtle meet any other hobos. She turned to run. Violet! called the larger hobo. 
and relief washed over Violet. She ran toward them, the gravel roadbed crunching under her feet. Page 149. I was just on my way to look for you, she said. We shook those Palmer agents, said Myrtle. They're running around the Tennessee backwoods looking for us. She pointed back down the rails toward the freight yard. We rode in a caboose. But Violet looked at Myrtle and then at Mr. Martin. They were both rather suit-covered, though not as much as Violet and Myrtle had been after riding in the blind behind the engine with Hobie. Mr. Martin, you jumped off the train. I saw you. Mr. Martin shrugged and smiled. Sorry to scare you, Violet. I had to make it look like I jumped, so that the agent would leave us all alone. I went over onto the steps of the vestibule of the connecting car, then climbed up onto the roof and rode there till the next stop. Then I got into a different car. And you told us it was dangerous to ride freight trains, Violet said. Mr. Martin shrugged again. Well, it is. Have you found your sister yet, Violet? Yes, said Violet. She's at the Tulane Hotel. It's just up the hill here. She'll be so glad to see you. Violet wasn't sure if this was true, but it was the sort of polite thing she'd always been taught to say. Chloe was just coming down the stairs into the big wooden paneled lobby of the Tulane, wearing her sky-blue walking suit and the straw hat with ye a yellow rose in it. She still turned the page. Page 150. She still looked exhausted, Violet thought. She looked like she hadn't slept at all. Chloe got to the bottom of the stairs and stopped, looking at Mr. Martin for a moment as if she wasn't sure who he was. She didn't notice Violet and Myrtle at all. Violet watched Chloe and Mr. Martin look at each other. The desk clerk and the drummer he was playing cards with watched, too. Chloe's mouth opened a little bit, and she froze. Mr. Martin turned faintly pink under the train soot, and Violet could almost hear him wishing he'd stopped to wash his face. Chloe's face turned pink, too. Theo, what were you thinking helping my sister run away from home? He didn't help me run away from home. I did it by myself. Violet said, annoyed. Chloe spared Violet a glance, and then looked back at Mr. Martin again. I'm delighted to see you too, said Mr. Martin, sarcastically. Theo, you shouldn't have left New York. Chloe spoke very quietly, and Violet guessed she was trying not to let the desk clerk and the drummer overhear. I wasn't aware I needed your permission to leave New York, Mr. Martin said. Theo, stop it. What happened? Did the federal agents find the safe house? No, your sister came crashing in on me. Violet felt she had by no means come crashing in. But the way the two of them were glaring at each other now, she didn't really want to be involved in their discussion. Page 153. Why didn't you send her home, Theo? Because it's impossible to make you headstrong Mayhew women do anything you don't want to, said Mr. Martin testily. I see you're still thinking in terms of making women do things, Chloe snapped. That's completely unfair, and you know it, Mr. Martin said. Violet and Myrtle exchanged glances. Unfortunately, this was enough to draw attention to Myrtle. Hey, the desk clerk barked, and everyone turned to look at him. Uh-uh, we don't allow them in here, he pointed. They all stared at him. You mean Myrtle? Mr. Martin said in a dangerously gentle voice. He stepped over and put a hand on Myrtle's shoulder. If you don't mind, we're trying to have a conversation here, said Chloe to the desk clerk. Have it somewhere else then, said the desk clerk, not in my hotel. I happen to be a guest here, said Chloe. She put her hand on Myrtle's other shoulder. Not if you're going to bring in coloreds and parade them around the lobby, the desk clerk snarled. Yes, this is a high-tone establishment, said the drummer. Turn the page. Page 152. Yeah, this is a high-tone establishment, said the drummer, shuffling the cards and pushing his hat back on his head. Have you two eaten? Chloe asked Mr. Martin. No, we were just going to look for something. Do you need any money? I, I mean to get the child something to eat, Chloe said. Violet noticed that they were both looking at Myrtle now, and that neither of them seemed angry anymore. No, thanks. I have 
Are you going to get that colored kid out of here, or am I going to have to call somebody? The desk clerk asked. We're leaving, said Mr. Martin. I'm sure we can find some place where they'll take our kind in. Even in Nashville, he added, giving the desk clerk a nasty look. Can't imagine where, said the desk clerk. There's colored hotels, of course, but you ain't colored. I don't think I like Nashville, Myrtle said to Violet when they got out onto the street. I'm not so sure I like it either, said Mr. Martin, overhearing her. Well, it's your own, Chloe started to retort, but then seemed to think better of it. Nashville is where it's all come down to, Theo. We're going to win or lose everything in Nashville, and I'm staying right here until we do. Mr. Martin went over to the curb. How's the old hope chest holding up? Chloe followed him. Pretty well. I replaced the brass radiator with one of those steel ones, like you suggested. Page 153. Excellent. Mr. Martin stroked the radiator. And I was right, wasn't I? Yes, said Chloe fondly. It hardly ever overheats now. Violet noticed that Chloe seemed suddenly happier and much less tired than she'd been a few minutes ago. Myrtle noticed, too. I don't think your sister is going to send Mr. Martin to the right about, she murmured. No, it's the car she's sweet on, not him, Violet said. Uh-huh, said Myrtle, skeptically. We should drive her out into the country, take a picnic, said Mr. Martin. There are some beautiful places east of Nashville. And I could teach the girls to drive, Chloe said. At the words, the girls, Mr. Martin turned around and looked at Violet and Myrtle. He had clearly forgotten they were there. Let me go get this one something to eat, he said, and find a place to park her. There has to be a hotel that takes whites and colored in this town somewhere. Violet watched them go with regret. She hadn't realized it until now, but she hadn't seen a single colored person at the Hermitage or the Tulane. She was sorry that Myrtle wasn't going to be able to stay with her. Maybe when women got the vote, they'd be able to change that. End of chapter 12. Homework. Read chapter 12, complete the summary notes, and the summary in your reader's guide. Let's review how to fill out the Somebody In Wanted But So Then summary notes. The somebody is the character or the narrator in a text. In is the place where the text is set. Wanted is what the character or the narrator is hoping for but is the problem or the obstacle that might get in the way of what the narrator or the character wants. So is the outcome or resolution, and then is what happens to move the story forward. The somebody is Violet. In, they're in Nashville at the Tulane Hotel. Wanted. Violet wanted to be reunited with blank and blank now that she's found Chloe. She also wants to help out the suffs by spying on the blank. But Violet isn't quite sure where to start looking for them. So while she was out walking, she spots blank and blank disguised as hobos. Then, they all go back to the Tulane Hotel, where Mr. Martin and Chloe see each other again. The desk clerk will not let Blank stay at the hotel, so they have to leave. Pause the video if you need more time to complete the work on your homework. Now it's time to write your summary using the summary notes. In Chapter 12, Violet wants to find her friends Blank and Blank. At the same time, she wants to help Chloe and the other suffs by being a blank for them. As she was out walking, not sure how to find Myrtle and Mr. Martin, she spots them disguised as blank. They all go back to the Tulane Hotel, and Mr. Martin and Chloe see each other again. The hotel will not allow blank to stay there, so she and Mr. Martin leave to find a place where they can both stay. End of chapter 12